uh, well hello everybody again this is the summit three and this is the grand final day and i'm here with the kuraki hi kura hey how are you doing i'm doing good thanks how are you feeling before the finals i feel good uh, yesterday you were really damn strong you were damn strong for all of this tournament but vichy gaming were really close to to break your winning streak but you didn't let them to do you have a plan for that game yeah we prepare for every game quite a lot so we felt confident mm -hmm. okay let's talk a little bit about uh, the last events about star ladder which can barely be called successful for you and about red bull did that defeat in bucharest served you as a boost to take red bull uh yeah um when we lost in star ladder quite early like we sat together and sorted out our problems so we came back stronger i think so red bull was a good test for us and now we're here doing quite okay Mm -hmm. And let's uh, do a flashback to the previous DI uh, where Team Secret was created, I believe. So would you please tell us a little bit about that, the story of Team Secret creation from the starting from the Johan and Simba and up to acquiring Sai and Artizi? Well, the story went like after TI4, like the season starts over, so people orientate themselves to make new teams. And I met Johan. I already knew him from before, but I didn't really know him closely. And we talked a lot about Dota, and then we realized that we have a lot of things in common about the game, and also outside of the game. So Note and I, we were like talking, talking for like every day for maybe five, ten hours about Dota and making a team. And then I told him, like I asked him, let's make a team, and he was very excited to do it. Then he uh, took fly from Fnatic and I took a puppy and then we were thinking we need one more good player and in our mind as far as really amazing so we talked to him as well and yeah then we made Team Secret. And was it hard for you as you were close friends to Johan and you are I believe was it hard for you to make a decision to replace him? Oh yeah it was uh, I couldn't uh, when this role uh, roster changes happened, it was very messy and rushed. It just happened. And uh, I talked a lot with Johan, but Johan is like such a good guy. He took it very good. And uh, well, I mean, I, s I still feel bad about it sometimes, but he's still my dear friend. I mean, I, f I think you always see me around with him. So yeah, good. it's okay. just uh, competition is just cruel. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, Friendship and all is there, but at the end of the day, it's competition and career, so you have to make decisions. Yeah, yeah it's hard, but I'm glad to hear that you're still close with him. Uh, so, uh, speaking about your current roster, did it take uh, much time for you to adjust to each other? How do you get along? Oh, it actually took a lot of time. Like, as you see in Salada, we struggled quite a lot, so we were still not really meshed as a team. But I think we're on a good pace to become a better team. It's like you have two players from Navi, that is Papi and me. Then you have two players from EG, uh, TZ and Zai. And then you have uh, S4 from Alliance. And every player has like such a long history in Dota, or at least a very successful history. Like All these players have placed top three in TI. Two guys won TI, one finalist and one uh, and two guys are third place. So everyone has like a lot of ideas about the game. They're very like high caliber players. And it's very hard to like get five strong stars together and make them work as a team. Yeah. yeah. And uh so it took us a lot of time. And uh but I think it's going good for now. You're on the same page right now. Yeah, for now we are at least. <laughs> Okay, uh, tell us about the way Cyborg, Matt and Theban joined the team and about their role in the team. Uh, during TI4 I talked to Theban if he uh, wants to coach my new team. I was already talking with uh, No Tail about making a team and he said he's gonna try to play a bit more and then uh, after TI4, after some weeks, he messaged me again and he told me that his team is like disbanding or that he got kicked, something like that. And then he asked me if I, if he can join my team as a coach, and I said, yeah, sure, just come along. And yeah, Cyborg Matt was like, uh, well, he's our new manager. Um, before that, we had uh, Evany from Fnatic as our manager, but since we parted with uh, Tel, there's a 
bit complications, but uh, she was a very good manager. Like she was one of the best managers I've worked with, and Cyborg Matt is also doing a really good job. After you parted ways with the Navi, uh, you don't belong to you don't belong to any uh, organization. So are you fine with that? Can you point out any advantages and d disadvantages of that? Yeah, we are pretty much freelancers. Actually, we aren't professionals, you know, because we're not getting paid for what we do. We just uh, play Dota. Like, um, the thing is that there's, like, a lot of problems with organizations, between players and organizations. I mean, like, you already heard about it a little bit. There's always some conflicts. Yeah. And there's, like, um, there's no good system. Like, the... In the esports scene, it's like there's a lot of money in it, but the way the money moves, it's very bad. No one knows where the money exactly comes from and where it moves, where it's stuck in between, and then it gets to the player the last. And uh, players are just treated not good, in my opinion, and they're very underpaid too. So we decided we don't need to. We need we don't need an organization because they they take uh, huge cuts from tournament winnings. And if you do like the math of uh, salary and tournament winnings, and if you think like you're a good team and you can win some some money from tournaments, then you understand that it's uh, it's just a scam what the organizations are doing. So we decided to not go with them. So but most of players think that this is stability. If you belong to some organization that's taking care of you, so. Well, the thing is that esports players they're like we're computer players. We're very young. People are very young and they're not very, uh, they're not very conscious about business. They don't understand exactly what business is. And maybe uh, they don't want to. So. Yeah, exactly. Of course, they just want to play Dota. Mm -hmm. And um, the way I see it is like a lot of organizations just, uh, they, they exploit young people. Because yeah. we are young people. We, d we don't have uh, the head for business. Like we, our minds are in, in Dota. We need to practice 10, 12 hours a day and think about it all the time. We don't have time to make organizational work. So what organizations do is they comfort players by telling them about uh, like stability and we take care of everything and they do and a lot of organizations do a good job. Now we took very good care of me overall. But in the end it's like you just look at black on white on the paper what is there what do they actually give us and what do we have to give and then you understand you don't need it. Like I can say for our team we don't really need it. And yeah. So you feel yourself confident, comfortable right now to be like free agent or something? Uh, yeah, f like I think we will stay this way till TI probably, mm -hmm. and after TI maybe we will. Like I hope the scene will grow a bit more, and maybe we will find something good. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about Navi. Uh, I hope you've been following for all of their twists and turns. Change, roster changes and their performance. So what do you think about their performance? Well, I think they're getting better and better every day. They were very close to qualify for Red Bull. They barely lost. Then they were close to qualify for um, ESL. So I think they're in a much better spot for now. But, um, well, I mean, time will tell how it works for them. Do you believe that they finally found their game with art style? And if yes, then what was missing was another roster, with so previous rosters? Well, I think uh, when they had FNG, he, they actually had a really great captain, but they didn't appreciate him. And um, didn't have time maybe for him. I mean, I understood what's happening with FNG because when I was playing in Navi with uh, Puppy, they also didn't appreciate us. That was uh, one of the main reasons why we left. And it's like if you feel underappreciated by your teammates, even though you put a lot of work, especially when you're like two captains, Puppy and me. You put so much work in the game, and at the end of the day, they don't appreciate you, and they just like throw shit at you, you know. And then you're like, "Fuck this," you know. I don't want to play with these guys. And then FNG joined the team, and she was doing great, actually. Like they won some tournament even, and then they were doing great. But still, they were like, "No," <laughs> like they were not uh, treating them nicely. And then FNG got kicked, and now you see he's in a very good spot. He got invited to the international. This is how life works. The people work hard, they get what they, what they deserve. And um, then they had some struggle, like they couldn't really find a replacement. They played with Goblak, right? Mm -hmm. But it didn't really work out for them. But I think with art style it's like going better. But I do think with FNG it's, 
a better chance because I respect FNG a lot as a player and as a person. But time will tell what's uh, what's going to be the case in the end. Maybe they just needed a strong leader, you know, like Papi was. Oh, maybe. Um, I've, I mean, I know all the problems of Navi since I've been part of this team for one and a half years. I know exactly how deep rooted the problems are, but I can't really talk about it. <laughs> so I just wish them the best, though. Like I have to say that. How do you estimate their chances in European quals? Oh, well. I mean, my team, we're betting who wins, mm -hmm. and uh, I say that either Navi or Burden United wins, so I, f I want one of these two teams to win in the end. I see. Uh, despite your open to interview, and I do appreciate this, you uh, can barely maybe consider yourself to be a media personality because of your low activity in social media, so what would you say about that? May we expect that it's going to change in the nearest future? Well, I... <laughs> Like, it's very hard. <laughs> like, I'm very a uh, reserved person, and I'm also shy. So, I, I don't know. I should change it probably. Like, I should give back more to my fans because they uh, they're always nice to me. They always send nice messages. They always cheer for me. But uh, I try my best. <laughs> I guess. Uh, I guess. Uh, oh, before I let you go, do you want to give any shout outs to your fans, friends? Uh, yeah, shout out to my team. Shout out to my fans, and uh, thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me. Wish you best of luck, and thank you for watching. Bye.